Hello everyone. Hope you all are doing well. You all are taking care of yourself. You are staying home, staying safe, and you are not going out of home at all. So all right, stay home and study well. Uh, so welcome to this video. We'll be talking about structure. That is the first most concept of Unit Five. So let's begin with this. So we'll speak about structure. So why do we need structure? By the way. Structure also combines data items together, like array combines. But there is a difference. Now look at this example. Mass in three subjects of one particular student. How you can store these three values? So one possible way is you declare three different variables of the same type, or you can declare array with size three. So m of zero, m of one, and m of two. Here you can store three values. All right. Now what if you want to include two more values into this? If you want to include same average of these three along with the name of the student now here you want to combine them now how you can store it at one using one particular variable so now here you are trying to combine average which is of type float or double and the name which is string i mean character so you are trying to combine data items which are of different types which is not possible in arrays so here we have to take help of structure so basically structure helps you to combine data items of different types and it helps you to construct a complex data type so understand in introduction that a structure is a mechanism to combine data items which are of different types so why you want to combine the data items of different types so why you have thought of combining average with the three marks and also the name now that average has got relation with those three marks yes because it is the average of those three marks itself and th this data is of one particular student with some name now these values like average then three marks and then name of the student these all values are logically related with each other so though you combine data items of different types but those data items are logically related data items so structure is very convenient tool for handling such group of logically related data items so some more examples of logically related data items like time so you have your seconds hours minutes and then we have customer with name telephone city and category these are logically related things then we have book, author, title, price, year. So this way, these are the examples. Now we'll see how you define a structure, the syntax for defining structure. So now we'll be introduced to one new keyword, struct. That is the keyword we'll be using to define structure. So struct is one of the 32 keywords among them. Then you follow with the opening bracket. After this, inside this, we have to define this, those data items you want to combine all together along with their data types on individual lines. So the next thing is here data items and then you define the members which all you want to combine. And then you close and terminate it with the semicolon. So this is you have to pay, pay attention here. Structure definition is terminated with a semicolon. All right. Now look at this example. Name of the example, uh, name of the structure is book. Uh, followed with uh, title, author and pages and price. These four things you have defined in the book. So now looking at this, so struct is the keyword we have used to define the structure. Book is the name of my structure. It is also called a structure tag. And then title, author, pages and price. These four things which are inside structure are called as the structure elements or structure members. Okay, so now what this structure definition tells, it tells that the information ha has to be represented or the data has to be represented in the following format. That is title has array of 20 characters, then we have author with size of 15 characters, then number of pages with integer value and price as float value. So now this one set, this complete one set will be your one structure variable data now we'll understand in next slide what is structure variable data now what observations we have done on the syntax of the structure that we always terminate it with the semicolon 
yes then the second thing is each member is declared independently that means uh, we declared on one line each member separately now uh, the new compiler support even if you declare multiple members on one line most of the times of the same type then the tag name tag name is the nothing but the name of the structure that can be used to declare the variable of its type now this we will understand in the next slides so now how do you declare the variables now say int m1 m2 m3 that is we have declared the m1 m2 m3 of type integer you can also declare variables of type structure which you have defined so that we'll see in the next slides declaring a structure variable now why do we need to declare the structure variable so the structure elements or members which are there inside the structure we have to access them for that we need a structure variable so the syntax for it is like this again the keyword struct and the tag name now this tag name is nothing but the structure name which is already defined and then you mention the variable one variable two variable and whatever the number of variables you want to define so these all are the variables of type structure and remember structure is a user defined data type int float char double these all are built in data type but structure is a user defined data type and you can have the variables of type structure so now this syntax has following things the keyword struct and then we are for after struct we have a name of the structure then after name of the structure we have the variables of type structure separated by comma and at the end it is terminated with a semicolon so now remember one thing you have to define structure variable then only we can use structure members or structure elements now structure variables and structure members are different what are the structure members which are defined inside structure if you want to use them you have to link them with structure variable so after declaring structure variable only there will be memory allotted for structure members now look at this strict book book one book two book three so here we have book one book two book three are the variables of type struct structure book now book one will ha have its own title author number of pages and price book two will have its own title author number of pages and price and similarly book three will also have now the complete declaration looks like this that is first a structure declaration followed with a semicolon this is one complete structure declaration then you declare the variables of type structure now here you have def defined book 1 book 2 book 3 you have declared which are of type book which is a structure so book 1 book 2 book 3 are variables of type book so book 1 book 2 book 3 all three of them will have their own copies of title author pages and price and remember after declaring structure variable only there will be some memory for structure members so structure members occupy memory only after associating with structure variables so this is a note you have to remember then next how we can combine structure definition and structure variable declaration all together so here we can uh, skip the tag name so initially when you define structure that time we use it but when you declare structure variable we don't use that tag name so that is optional here now look at this example struct the keyword and then tag name is a structure name now at after the closing bracket we have directly mentioned variable 1 variable 2 variable 3 what are these three variables these are the variables of type structure which is defined so it is definition and declaration combined together so now <clears throat> look at this book and then we have four structure elements inside and book one book two book three are the these three are the structure variables now how do you access the structure members so to access the structure member we have to make use of the dot operator or period operator is used to access structure member now if you remember the operators we have covered so far the last type of operator special operators where we have covered size of and comma operator and two more are there that is one of them is dot operator and ampersand ampersand operator you might have covered already in pointers dot operator is used to access the structure members but how do you access the structure member we have to associate it or link it with the structure variable so by linking the structure uh, variable 
with structure member we can access it so book one dot price that means book one is the structure variable price is the structure member so we are associating it with book one or linking it with book one so as i had said book one book two book three they have their own values of title author pages and price so here you are particularly referring to book one dot pricer you book one dot price you cannot just generically refer to price so it has to be related with structure variable all right so this refers to the member price linked with variable book one so this way you can access the structure members and you can use it in the initialization to assign some values to for processing or for any kind of calculation and you can use it in the input function and output function so in the printf scanf statements or any kind of formatted input output functions or unformatted where you can use the structure members so you can use it like a normal variable but the compulsion is it has to be with the structure variable and then dot and then structure member this way only it has to be accessed now we'll have a look on this program where we define one structure uh, this is reading a name a salary date of joining for employees and the same data will print it as it is so my structure i define here first with the name structure employee and we have five members structure members name then ddmmyy all together it is the date of joining and then salary so these are the, uh, the structure members we have defined now let me begin with main function so now note one thing structure definition is before main so it goes into the global declaration section so this structure will be available anywhere outside main uh, in the entire program so first thing i uh, declare the structure variable e1 which is of type employee so using e1 i will access name dd mm y y and salary so even is the structure variable and those five are the structure members then first i ask user to enter name date and salary so i have mentioned the date format in the has to be entered in dd mm y y so first i'll be entering name so i have to read it using percentage s so i know that it will not take blank spaces then i have to read date month and year so for dd mm y y all three of them are percentage d and then salary is of percentage f so my control strings out be defining this way percentage s then three times percentage d and percentage f then you read it in this way so as we know that for string it is optional uh, to use ampersand so i am not using ampersand here it is just even dot name then the next thing is dd mm y y so by using the structure variable even so ampersand even dot dd then mm and then y y and at the end you read the salary so this kind of statement reads those all values and put it into the structure members which are related with the structure variable e1 next i have to print this data as it is so i print the name as name colon using percentage s so i am printing the event dot name second i want to print the date of joining in the same form dd mm y y so all three values i am printing in printing them into one printf statement so it is date of joining percentage d hyphen percentage d hyphen percentage d first one to print the day then the second one is to print to month and third one is to print the year okay then the next thing is like a salary percentage f where you print the even dot salary all right then you close the main function so this will print access the structure members and then you are accessing the structure member for taking input and also for printing them next how you can initialize the structure members that we'll see so how you can initialize the values of the structure members now look at this example directly now this is the main and the structure name is st records and you have two variables into weight and float height terminated with semicolon now look at this uh, struct is the keyword then uh, name of the structure and s1 now what is s1 it's a structure variable equals in the curly bracket we have given two values 60 and 175.5 so 60 is the weight of um, s1 and 175.5 is the value for height of s1 so 60 goes for the first variable 175.5 goes to the second variable order is important here so in what order you have defined the structure variables in the same order you have to give values so this way you can initialize similarly you can do it for s2 and similarly you can go on incrementing the number of variables you want now remember one thing here 
you cannot initialize weight equal to some value inside structure itself the reason is if you suppose initialize weight is equal to some value inside structure then it is still logically not correct for whom you are defining weight is equal to some default value whether it is for s1 or s2 or some undefined basically structure is a template so you cannot initialize any structure member inside structure so it has to be through structure variable only once you declare structure variable then only you can use a structure member so you cannot initialize any variables inside structure so that is the point you have to make clear that initialization of individual members inside structure is not allowed in c now compile time initialization of a structure variable have the following elements so what all things you observe so keyword struct you begin with then the name of the structure whose variable you want to declare then the name of the variable then assignment operator then followed with the value separated by commas and then you terminate it with the semicolon at the end all right now we'll see how do you copy and compare the structure variables now remember structure variable is related with all the structure elements okay so now for example book 1 is having its own title author pages number of and 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 then price similarly for book 2 as well so now how do you copy and compare now if there are two variables of the same structure now suppose book 1 and book 2 and both of them are variables of one same structure called as book now what is the similarity there the similarity is both of them will have same structure members and same number of structure members with same type because they share same structure their values can be same or different but they have basically same elements so they can be copied in this way that is if suppose now this another example if person 1 and 2 belong to the same structure then when you say person 1 equal to person 2 now remember person 1 and person 2 are not normal variables they are structure variable so person 2 is having its own structure elements and person 1 is also having its own structure elements but they may have different values but they are basically related with multiple values so this copy is all the values of person 2 to person 1 okay so it is not only one value copying it is copying all the values of person 2 to person 1 and when you again say person 1 uh, equals to person person 2 equal to person 1 now anyways so it is having both of them are having the same values so copying is easy in structure variables you need not have to copy each element separately as long as they belong to the same structure so when you say structure variable 1 equal to structure variable 2 it copies all the values of structure variable 2 to structure 1 whichever is there on rhs it copies all those values to lhs okay but when you want to compare them when you want to say whether we want to check whether person 1 and person 2 whether they are having all same values in that case you have to compare it individually so it is not possible to compare it in this way so this is invalid it is not it is not possible so you have to individually or manually compare each value together all right now we'll have a look on this program to copy and compare structure variables now look at this structure class i'm having here roll number of a student then name and average marks so these three details now i begin with main i define with integer variable x so we'll understand later for what we have defined this then i have a structure class s1 so that is what s1 is a variable of type class and having these three values so you have i have declared as well as initialized same i can do it for s2 now s1 and s2 have their own values with the roll number name and average then i have declared s3 and i have not initialized now when you say s3 is equals to s2 what happens all the values of s2 are copied into s3 as well so ultimately they are having same value s3 is also having same roll number same name and same average as that of s2 so all the values of s2 are copying into s3 it's very easy in uh, to copy the structure variables now i want to check whether they are having same so now look at this long statement okay so x is equals to some condition logical and another condition logical and another condition then we have a question mark 1 colon 0 at the last part you remember something 
that question mark and colon what is this question mark and colon it's a conditional operator it's the only ternary operator in C so if you remember it's syntax expression 1 question mark expression 2 colon expression 3 so expression 1 is evaluated to true or false if it is evaluated to true you execute expression 2 else you execute expression 3 so this expression 1 is so long that it is having three parts in it you check whether roll number of s3 and s2 are same and marks of s3 and s2 are same and you are comparing string and you are checking whether it is giving you zero so now string compare gives you zero when strings are identical i repeat string compare that is strcmp returns you zero if given two strings are same so now this entire expression one when it will be evaluated to true when they have same roll number same marks and same name it will be evaluated to true so one will be stored in variable x so if x is equal to equal to one that means s2 and s2 are sharing same data so ultimately it means student 2 and 3 are same so i write the if condition x equal to equal to one student 2 and 3 are same and i print the values of s3 else these two are different student and then I close the mean. So it's a simple program to copy the structure variables and to compare. So comparison has to be done manually for every structure member. Copying is very easy. All right, now we'll see what operations we can perform on individual members. So now the all kind of operations almost can be performed on individual members. Only the thing is you have to access it using structure variables and then draw and then the structure member. So now for example, look at this. Here we are comparing with 102, I mean uh, logical operation you have done. Then the next thing, you are incrementing it five, then next thing is incrementing by one. So all these kind of operations can be performed. Access has to be through structure variable dot structure member. All right, so in the previous program, we have defined three uh, students. Now, what if you want to define more students, so for 10 or 15 or 20? In that case, we have to declare those many variables. So, struct, then the name of the structure, say student, and then you declare s1, s2, s3 till s20. So, instead of that, now C provides one provision here that you can declare the structure variable as an array with its size so here we'll discuss about the arrays of structure so this way you can define it now look at this example struct class s of 10 now this 10 is in is a size of s and what is s it is the structure variable of type class so here you define as s of 10 so it defines array of structure variable with 10 elements so now what will be there here now every structure variable is having its own structure elements of its so now s of 0 will have its own structure elements now for s of 0 it will have its own roll number name and average then s of 1 will have its own roll number name and average similarly s of 2 s of 3 s of 4 till s of 9 so here how you define the structure of variable so now listen to me well when you define struct class s of 10 it defines 10 element it defines the array of structure variable with 10 elements and every element has its own copy of all the elements of struct okay so this defines array called s with 10 elements and each of 10 has all the elements of struct class so this way you can use it for multiple things so now initializing now this is one example struct class s of 3 with the size 3 so now here you see one set inside that you have three sets so first set that is one rahul 52.6 this all these three values are assigned to s of 0 then the second set is assigned to s of 1 and third set is assigned to s of 3 so in s of 1 there will be its own roll number that is 1 and name and then average so this way it will uh, initialize s0 dot roll number s0 dot name for the first set then similarly for s of 1 and similarly for s of 2 so this way you can have the array of structure now we'll have this C program, we'll discuss to read roll number and marks in three subjects of N students. So you are going to read roll number and marks in three subjects of N students. You may read for five students or eight students, depends on the N value user gives. Then 
we have to print all this data along with average marks so now basically first i have to define a structure my structure name is students along with roll number m1 m2 m3 now for each student i have to calculate its average so i include one more variable into my structure that is average all right man now my structure is ready so let me fun begin with main function so now this structure how many times you are going to use it we will be using it for n students so i have to ask user to give me value of n then i'll be using the array of structure so when i use to the array of structure here i have to have the index variable so first let me define these two variables i and n now what is the next thing to be defined so next thing i have to define the struct students s of 25 what is this s is the name of my structure variable with size 25 this i'm going with the assumption that user may not give value of n more than 25 the next thing is now i ask user to enter the number of students so once the number of students are entered now for those many students i have to read roll number and marks in three subject so now first time i will read roll number and marks in three subject and i will sh store it in s of zero dot roll number m1 m2 m3 then next set i will store it in s of one dot roll number m1 m2 m3 so this i repeat so now i is my index variable so here first I print the message enter data for student 1 then 2 then 3 then 4 in this way so the next value of i I want to print so I print here value of i plus 1 at the percentage d remember a uh, value of i is not incremented it is just adding and printing and storing it nowhere now the scanf statement first I want to read roll number then the marks in three subjects so roll number is percentage d and also marks in three subjects of percentage d all of them i'm storing it in s of zero in the first loop then s of one then s of two so i'll be using i as my index variable for structure variable s so here this way you define and this you store them once you have stored all these three values now the next thing is i can calculate its average so to calculate the average i have to add all of them and divide it by three so as we know these all three are integers so i have to divide it by 3.0 and i am storing it into s of i dot average now the next thing is I am printing all the data entered in the first I'll be printing the column roll number then m1 m2 m3 and then average so again I have to start a loop from i equal to 0 to n and I print roll number m1 m2 m3 and average with percentage d four times and percentage f giving this way spacing hoping that it will exactly come below uh, what we have defined the average roll number and this way so now next thing is i'm printing the s of i dot roll number then m1 m2 m3 and then the average so this program reads values for n students and print all those values in this particular way so this way we can use structure variable for reading the multiple values for multiple variables so all right so that's all for this video so what we conclude here some of the points that structure basically combines data types of different data type uh, different types values and uh, they are logically related with each other you cannot initialize structure members inside that is individually then array of structures we can use to access multiple structure variables then the next thing is copy uh, assigning the values or copying the values of structure variable is possible with assignment operator but comparing them it's not possible we have to do with with individual members so that's all students for any queries or any doubts or any points to be covered you please put it into the comment box so it can be covered in the next video all right so take care of yourself and thanks for watching